This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2014 Autumn Ridge by StarCraft model 289BHS. Okay, we're just going to go over a few of the features. We got crank down stabilizers, of course. We've got a power awning with a LED strip, an exterior refrigerator. Okay, this is just a video signal out for your TV and uh, power, so you can set a TV out here. This right here is your your uh, fill for your fresh water tank. If you're camping at a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, you can fill the fresh water tank and uh, pump the water from there. So this is where you would fill that. The most common way is using city water. I'll show you that when we get on the other side. This is obviously your water heater. Um, the controls are inside. The drain is right there. Okay. I'll show you the controls when we get in there. Okay, and here is, is this is this is just pass-through storage, and this is your hitch right here. It's a Husky center line weight distribution switch or hitch, I'm sorry, with built-in sway control. And uh, we'll show you how that works. You can always go to their website too and look at their hookup video if you need to you know, refresh your memory. You've got a, a power tongue jack with a light, okay. Uh, two LP tanks full, a new deep cycle uh, marine battery, okay. In here is your, that's your dump hose and, a, and a, a reducer for your power cord. Okay, move along. So this is your power cord, it pulls right out of the side, of course. These are your dump valves here. You got your gray valve there, which is toilet water, or sink and shower water. And then you got, you've got uh, your black tank, which is toilet water and waste. So, basically you'll always dump the black first. Then you dump the gray to kind of wash it out. Um, let me get over this cord here. Now after you after you uh, dump your black tank, you can leave the valve open and you can hook the hose at the dump station right onto this, uh, this uh, hookup right here and it'll spray the inside of your black tank out, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. Now here's where you get city water to the trailer. This is the most common way, of course. You just hook the hose on there, turn it on, and everything is ready to go. Of course, you got an outside shower. Um, you should inspect the, the roof about every 90 days. Um, it's been inspected as of right now. I think it was done yesterday. It's in good shape, so you uh, you need to do, go up there every 90 days, look for separating or separating and cracking that sort of thing. That's with all trailers. Okay, thank you. Okay, I pointed this out, so here we go. Okay, so here we go. This is your control panel here. So you have um, your slide out switch here, your power awning switch there, um, regular light switches, your water pump, you turn it on right here, your uh, um, water heater, um, gas, you turn it on here. You can also turn it on on electric right here. Always make sure there's water in the tank before you uh, before you uh, turn it on or else you'll burn out the element real quickly. Let me just walk around the side here. Yeah. <laughs> when I tripped over the cord, I unplugged it. Okay, here we go. Should have told me I unplugged it, Tony. I, I tripped over the cord. <laughs> so I came in here and thinking, wow, he's got all the lights out. <laughs> yeah. Is he packing up to go? I don't want to mess you up. <laughs> okay, so, um, this is your battery levels here, two thirds. Fresh is still got water in it because um, we were testing it, obviously. Black is empty, gray is empty. So it's pretty simple. Once you get past two thirds with the, the gray and the black tank, you gotta stick, think about dumping the tank because it's starting to get full. So you just have a TV and uh, just a, uh, a stereo here. You also play, it also plays discs. Um, 
you know, so it's it's typical. Um, your remotes are right here. This is this right this right here is the thermostat. So it's just an analog thermostat. It's real simple. So to turn on the heat, you just go over one click. Of course, cool is all the way to the left. Fan is right next to that. Fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. Um, and then, of course, to always try to try to put the uh, fan on automatic when you can. Okay. So there's probably oh there yeah there's, so you have a TV here obviously and there's your hookups up there. You can see it. I'm gonna try and get some of this water off here. Your bed. You also have these here. Which is like storage area, I guess. You uh, the bed comes up and there's some storage underneath there. This bed folds out, so you take the back cushions off. You grab it down here and it folds out three panels or two panels out, and then the back fold, uh, drops into place. So it's a good height of bed. You can also turn this area into a bed by dropping the poles and setting this um, tabletop right on the cleats going around it. And turn it into a bed. Plus, you got two bunks, so you got plenty of sleeping space. The uh, microwave, the uh, range hood. You got fan and uh, light. I'm not sure if the gas is on right now, but if not, well. basically you spark it to light it by turning this clockwise. So you're just going to go to the light and then spark it, and you can see it lit right there. Three knobs, three burners, obviously. The uh, oven is lit here. It has a pilot light that has to be lit. So you light the, you turn this on to pilot, push and hold to keep it held in, and then you light the pilot light back there. After it lights, you still hold it in for another 10, 15 seconds, then go to temperature. But when you shut the oven off, the uh, pilot light goes off too. So you have to relight it each time you use the oven. Okay. This device down here is the power converter. This converts uh, AC to DC power. So let me see if I can get it open with my... There we go. So you can see you've got regular circuit breakers like you'd see at home. 110 AC and they're labeled. There's the label. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here. So you've got 12 volt fuses. And those are listed too to which, which, which uh, circuit that each fuse is for. Um, also, this is a battery tender, so when you're plugged in, it's going to keep your battery charged, too. So, it does that also. Okay. Refrigerator is a Norcold gas absorbs a refrigerator. It, um, basically, it always seeks out electricity first uh, when you put it on auto, which is where you're going to have it. Um, you do that, it'll look for electricity, and when it finds it, it'll use it. If it can't, it'll automatically switch over to gas. Or another another thing is, let's say you're you're gone um, exploring for the day, uh, so it's a good hot day, and you leave early in the morning. Soon after you leave, the power the campground has a power outage. Well, it it was working on electricity, but once it realizes the electricity is cut off, it'll switch over and light on gas, so you don't spoil your food. So generally, that's where you're going to have it. Okay. You just have more storage here. And of course the bathroom, the only thing you have to know about the bathroom if you don't know RV toilets is that you have to have chemical and water in it when you use it. So before you start using it, you dump a dose of chemical right in the bowl and then you step on the pedal, water will come swirling out and stand out long enough to put about a gallon or so of water in there. Some people use more, it's just a, a preference thing, but you got to have water and chemical in the black tank. The black tank is directly below. Um, before you, you start using it. Otherwise the smell will be uh, terrible and it can get clogged up also. Um, GFCI here, just so you know that there's probably two of them in this trailer. All the plugs are wired through them, even the one on the outside. So if you pop, if you're using the appliance outside that pops, you would still reset it in here, okay? All right, so I think that does it. I'm looking around. Yes. Okay, oh, one, one more thing. This is your antenna right here. Um, up, whoops, go crank it up this way, back down this way. You can also rotate it on the roof by doing that and spinning it. So, you hear it hit the roof, you, that's how you know. As soon as it starts to resist you a little bit, you hear that little clunk on the roof, you know you've cranked it all the way. 
All right, so uh, thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And please remember what I told you about inspecting your roof every 90 days. That's very important as a trailer owner. People don't do it enough, so make sure you take care of that, okay? Thank you.